Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. Welcome to 2023. First video I've done like this for a very long time, but today we're going to be comparing the similarities and differences between ACC and real life racing. So I was in a very fortunate position. I can talk about both, having done both in like the last two years or last three years even. And we're going to be talking about GT3 specifically because I, I don't really have the GT4 experience. So let's keep it completely talking about GT3s. Some of the things you'll hear in this video will be uh, comparing ACC specifically specifically to real life but some of the things will be more generic to sim racing as a whole so it should be fairly interesting i mean it might not be that's completely up to you that's why you're the viewer and i'm the editor or Bruh. not the editor i'm the creator and yeah just make sure you give it a thumbs up if you do enjoy it and sub to the channel as always the, the channel's been doing very well recently so i must say thank you to all those that have joined of late so uh without further ado let's get into the video so first up, we're going to compare the similarities because there's less of them and it's just, I think we'll get them out of the way, then attack the differences later on. So first thing is laser scan tracks. I think that's the main or the strongest similarity between the game and real life. I think ACC's tracks are pretty much bang on the money for the most part, uh, apart from maybe Spa and a few others. From what I've seen at least, you know, the British GT tracks specifically are very, very good. I think that's a real strength. Driving technique is another similarity for the most part. I've seen obviously the data from real life driving sessions I've done in British GT or Spa 24 hour last year. And I've seen the MoTeC data I use in the game. You look at the driving part, so the throttle brake, steering, gear selection, all that stuff, for the most part, it's very similar. My driving style is my driving style, so I tend to suit under steerier cars. But my driving style, the, the way I come off the brake, the way I, you know, connect the brake with the steering, and I, I, I guess the way you come on the throttle is sort of it's the same for most people. But braking the steering specifically, uh, ACC suits my driving style, and it seems to work in real life as well, which I think is testament to how realistic ACC is. And you know, I'm I'm not I'm really good on the tires in the game. I seem to be fairly good over a stint on tires in real life as well. So. I can draw a lot of comparison from that and I think that's very good. Another one moving forward then, mindset for the competition, you know, for any competition is the same in real life and esports. I think we all know that. The way you approach a qualifying lap, the way you approach a race start, the way you approach a pit stop, all those things, it's the same, uh, exactly the same. There's no difference at all really. The visual details of the game, I've got an example for this one. You know, if you look at the, the clip I've just put on the screen now, you can see the windscreen wiper moving and fluctuating through the air whilst this BMW is driving around Masano. And I think that's just one of many, many, many examples of ACC and the detail it has visually. And I think that's phenomenal. I mean, it has things in the game you don't even need. Like if you go into the cockpit of the car and you zoom in on certain sections, you know, it's got the stickers on the fire extinguisher. Uh, stuff like that it's not even necessary but it's there i think that's very cool it's very immersive especially when you're in vr and you look around and you can see all these things it gives the user a real immersive real experience so another one then the contact model so when you're racing wheel to wheel uh, fortunately in real life i've not had many or no i've had no accidents but i've had a few uh i guess rubbing is racing i've had a few of them moments and it feels similar you know there are exceptions where sometimes the game bugs out and it'll throw a car off into the air or you know one car will end up in narnia or something like that where you know that doesn't happen in real life and games do that they bug they're not always like that you know sometimes they do have weird moments for the most part the contact model saying i racing is completely different and very extreme you know if you if you touch another car you fly off into hyperspace where well, at least in acc it's i think it's the best out of the lot in terms of the sims we have in terms of wheel to wheel racing what happens to a car when you touch it it's not far off i think that's a similarity definitely and to be fair i think for the most part that is pretty much the major similarities out of the way i think i could go into more detail the video would be extremely long though and probably a little bit boring i'm trying to hit very generic points here so i'll plug some videos that can go into more detail about certain topics so in the card above there is a video where i talk about the british gt dlc that came out a couple of years ago or last year and it talks about the track specifically and it goes into a bit of detail about alton park snetterton and donnington which you might find interesting another video i'm going to plug or there's two actually so in the description below there will be a video from random call sign about sim racing pedals and at the spa 24 hour last year he asked a few drivers including me how they compare with the real life counterpart so there's some really interesting explanations in that i mean mine is 
you know, pretty mediocre actually compared to the others. The, the other guys went into serious detail. I think David Perel was one of them and a few others. And Marcello, obviously the guy who won the race. So definitely go and see that. And Booster Media also has a video in there as well in the description where he compares my real life onboard from Spa in the night to his insane, probably the best simulator on the planet. And just, he tries to get his sim as close to my real life cam as possible. And it's, it's insane. I mean, it's like, it, it, it's not far off at all. So go and give that a watch as well. You can really see how close sim racing can be to real life. I think for the similarities, that is it. So let's move on to the differences. All right then, so differences. There's quite a few of them. And this is not a bad reflection on Kunos and the game they've made. I love ACC. I've been playing it the last two years. So it's just more me feeding back the differences. They don't even have to change them. It's just simply, you know, comparing real life with the game. So I guess the main one is the tracks or some of the tracks aren't up to date. Main one being Spa. So when I went to Spa last year, it was like one and a half seconds, maybe two seconds quicker than it was before. Just from Eau Rouge being reprofiled and sort of easier flat. Some corners have been resurfaced. So there was more grip. Uh, no name was geometrically a bit different, I think, because uh, they built the new bit for the MotoGP. So the corner itself was a bit different. And there's a few tracks with a little, they're slightly out of date. So I'm sure that'll come with updates and I'm sure they'll get on top of that. The next one is curbs and bumps, which yeah, in the game they're pretty nuts. They're so much more aggressive in ACC than they are in real life. You, some curbs and some bumps you, you can not take, you know, especially the McLaren is the worst car as well in the game for bumps and stuff like that, which I'm not sure if that's the case in real life. But, you know, Eau Rouge, the, the bump in the game at Eau Rouge in any car is just ridiculous. Uh, it'll randomly just fire you off into the wall. Uh, there's other corners like the exit of 130R at Suzuka where the curb will just suck you in. So you have to put the ride height to a ridiculous ride height to actually take that curb, which I don't think is the case in real life. I think it's just a flat curb. And the general feeling over bumps and stuff is you can feel in the game you're really on a curb or something. Whereas in real life, for the most part, the cars just sort of sail over them. You do have to drive slightly differently. You have to drive around that in the game, which is uh, difficult. But I suppose the way I can relate it to myself would be at Spa last year, my main weakness when I look back at my driving was lack of curb usage. If I think to the bus stop chicane, if I think to Piff Paff, certain I, I, weren't, I wasn't abusing the inside curbs and that's because in the game I've just been so used to not taking those curbs. I definitely left some lap time on the table there during the race stint, during qualifying. So it's something I'll look to change obviously moving forward but yeah it's, uh, it's definitely a difference and I guess the next difference would be variables generally while you're driving so an example of that would be you're driving around in real life and from one lap to the next there might be some marbles on the racing line where cars come off and on it or some gravel where they've picked up on the exit and it's thrown gravel onto the track or grass or something and then you go into the next corner you've got less grip which is a very fine detail uh, it's not something you really think about coming from sim racing to racing you drive over the gravel you drive over grass whatever and you don't really think about going into the next corner oh i've got less grip here I'm going to have to break a fraction earlier. I'm going to have to go through the corner slightly slower because my, my tyres are dirty or, you know, they're not going to have the same grip as they would on an optimal lap. Whereas in sim racing, you don't, well, at least in ACC, you don't really get that. So you sort of drive, providing the track's at max grip and it's not raining or whatever, you sort of drive to the same grip limit every single lap of every, every corner of every lap. And it's, you don't ever change, which you need to be slightly more conscious, I think, in real life whilst you're driving because there are differences lap to lap. Whereas in the sim, you're just at the same limit. So you can sort of go into your subconscious a bit more. So I found that a bit of a wake up call, especially in British GT when I really wasn't used to it. But even at Spa, when I'd had two years out of the car, I came back to it and there were a few times where I went over some gravel that had been thrown onto the track and I went to the next corner, braked where I usually braked and just went sort of straight on a little bit and missed the apex. And so those are little things you have to drive around to maximize your driving. So another big difference then is sound. So the sounds in some cars in ACC are very good. So like the, the whines of like the gearboxes and stuff. I think the Porsche, I think is very good, but I can only directly compare the McLaren because I've only drove the McLaren in real life. The sound is different in terms of like the tone and stuff. But the, the main thing really is the the noise of all the other stuff. Like just the, I mean, you know what? I'm not even gonna explain it. I'll throw in the clip of me driving around in Spa. Then I'll throw in a clip of the game and you'll, you'll see the differences immediately.
G-Force then is another one, obviously, when your body gets thrown around on the braking, through corners, even on the accelerator a little bit. They're all things that throw away the precision of which you can drive with, because obviously on a sim, you haven't got any of those variables. You know, your body is static and you can be very precise with every single control because you've got nothing pushing against your body. Whereas, yeah, when your head's thrown forward uh, in a braking zone, then it's, it's slightly harder to keep your keep your bearings so that's one thing uh heat is another one obviously the cockpit gets very hot i think at spa in the summer i think it was like 40 or 50 degrees in the cockpit which you know when you got all the stuff on uh you do have a fan but it doesn't really work when you're stationary and you know you do get quite hot it does make a difference again concentration all that stuff affects the precision of which you can or the consistency as well of how well you can drive plenty of fluids does help that but it's still not the same as the sim where you're sat there nice and comfy with a cup of tea it's it's different flat sported tires as well in real life feel a lot more extreme than acc i think r factor 2 simulates it a bit better but even then you're only feeling the flat spot through your arms whereas in real life you feel it through your entire body and it affects your vision as well i mean there's a clip of me locking up in the spa 24 hour when my abs failed on the first lap of my stint i went into a braking zone hit the brake pedal at 90 bar flat spotted both fronts and i did like three or four laps after that and honestly I c it was like I c it was like porpoising in F1. I couldn't I couldn't see a thing. My vision was completely blurry. The, the wheel felt ridiculous, like the whole car was shaking. It felt like the car was going to explode. And that might sound dramatic, but I'm just, I'm not used to it. I'm not used to driving uh, real cars with those sort of issues. So definitely an ACC, I've, I've turned the ABS off and locked up the fronts to see what it felt like. And it it's just, you don't feel anything really. Yeah, that's a big difference. I guess another difference, I've sort of touched on it already, but it's comfort. So when you get in the car for a stint, it's a real rush to get the seat belts on. And sometimes, you know, the seat belt might not be quite sitting on your shoulder properly. I, I remember one time i think in the practice session the seat belt was underneath the hands device so i tightened it up and it was just tightening directly on my shoulder which hurt a little bit and it was a bit you know i was a bit cack handed in the cockpit and another thing as well could be earpiece slightly loose in the helmet and it's digging into your ear or it could be anything you know the pedals might be slightly too far away from, you know i think in endurance racing when you're sharing a car with different teammates you're never fully comfortable anyway but those other things thrown into the mix make a difference again to your concentration consistency you need to get used to it i think that's the difference in real racing you need to just sort of suck it up and get used to whatever is thrown at you whereas in the sim if something's not right i'll spend time trying to get it right just so it's more comfortable you don't really have that luxury in real life and i think it took me a while to get over that you know initially i, I probably was just complaining that stuff was wrong when you need to just suck it up and get on with it so that's a that's a big difference smells as well i think it's an underrated difference because no one really talks about that for me with the lack of experience i'll go into you know, i'll be on a lap everything's fine next lap i'll be you know in a group of cars you might just get this random woof of like i don't know it could be anything it could be brakes it could be oil it could be literally anything and it's another sense that when you're driving around that goes into your nose you think about what that smell is and it distracts you momentarily from what you're actually doing so it's another variable that is a difference you don't get that in ACC really unless something weird's going on in your house which you know we won't really go into that that's a different video altogether but the point being it's a difference and I did have to note that down because it's something I noticed a big difference is the approach to building up speed and finding the limit from the game to real life. Uh, this is a generic sim racing thing. This isn't just ACC. It's so different. I guess the best way to put it would be in the sim to find the limit. You break too late, you crash, you escape and you start again and you bring it back. It's a quicker way of doing it. If you if you start early and then break later, break later, you're wasting time. You may as well just break late and then bring it back. It's a lot quicker to do that. Whereas in real life, you can't do that, obviously. I mean, you, if you crash, it's game over, isn't it? If you want to try breaking late, Scott Mansell from Driver61, he told me a very good tip that I'll always remember. It was the week before Alton Park, the British GT race I won, where he said, if you want to break later and you want to do it in a safe manner, break at the same point you're breaking, but break harder. And if you end up stopping too early for the corner, then break later. Then you're pretty safe to do so. No, I just, I, I did that and it worked really nicely, I think. Yeah, you do have to build it up. It takes a few laps. And obviously in real life, you're limited with the amount of laps you can 
can do, which is like a double-edged sword, really. But yeah, that is a big difference. And you have to have a mental, you have to distinguish the two. Otherwise, if you carry that sim mentality into a real car, you will definitely crash and then you won't get another, well, you're very unlikely to get another opportunity to race again. So another difference then is the way you look into corners in real life versus the sim. So as we know, screens are pretty much two-dimensional, no depth to it. And then in real life, you've obviously got, like me now, I'm looking around my room, it's all, it's three-dimensional, isn't it? You've got depth depth perception and i guess the way you can simulate that is vr and i use vr to train for real life racing because for that reason exactly really so the way you look into corners is is different i always find when i put a vr headset on after using a screen i always break too early for corners i'm always driving under the limit it takes me a while to get my bearings with the depth coming at you so i think if i didn't use vr to train it would take me a little bit longer in the real car excuse me So I've always found in the McLaren at least that gears in certain corners are slightly different. So it must be the ratios or they just must be different from the game to real life. Example would be Lacom at Spa in real life. We were braking and going down to third gear and holding third the whole way through. In the game, I was in second gear for the right and then second for the left and then third for the right. Puon will be another one where in the game I'm in third gear, in real life I'm in fourth. So I think in the game, the ratios must be a bit shorter. Hence why I'm in a lower gear. Oh no, sorry. The ratios must be longer because I'm in a short, I'm in a lower gear. So, yeah. Um, Jesus. Moving forward, esports racing lines. So we all know in esports, you know, you, you do really weird things in certain corners to save those final little hundredths or thousandths. An example would be after Stavolo 2, the right-hander before the back straight at Spa, where you tend to hug the inside the whole way down until the left starts to come round before Blanchemont. Or Silverstone on the exit of Chapel, sorry, so Magus Becker's Chapel, you tend to hug the left on the exit of Chapel all the way down the hangar straight. You can do it. I did do it to start with in real life. It's just so pointless though. You don't gain any time because in real life there's sort of that tyre scrub. So I don't think it's there in sim racing, but if you did that, you'd scrub the tyres a little bit. The friction would slow you down marginally and you'd lose a few thousands or hundreds. The other thing as well is that doing that, no one else is going to be doing that and you'll be offline and you'll pick up marbles and then your, your tyres are a little bit dirty for the next corner. So uh, I did start off doing that when I did British GT, but I soon stopped because I realised no one else was doing it and it just is so pointless. But in sim racing, it is good because it does save you a little bit of time. Setups, hugely different. I mean, to be honest, it might be the biggest difference between real life and the sim. If you think about it, I mean, I didn't see all the data sheets and stuff as to what the setup actually was on the real car, but I can tell you for free, they're not using max negative toe front and rear. They're not using max roll bars front and rear. They're not using it. So basically with ACC, when I first started playing it, I thought it was really realistic. I guess the V1.8 patch changed that a little bit, but I've realized in the, in the last year doing esports, the quickest setups are just broken, especially on the McLaren, probably on other cars as well. You know, max negative toe front and rear axles, just the weird stuff you can do with the rake, dampers, like you go max damping front and rear. At the moment, I think that seems to be a thing. And you just go to the extremes on all the sliders and it seems to be very very good like softest springs as well and it just it's a sign to me i mean it's the same on every sim to be honest i thought acc was different but it's just not different to find the best setups you do have to break the setups in a way and it's not logical at all and yeah in real life you just don't do these extreme things if i said that if i said to the engineers in a debrief you know right let's try negative toe on the rear and the front maximum and see how it goes i'd be told to go home probably you know it's just ridiculous so and that's not you know it doesn't really matter i'm just saying it is a difference and I, I don't even know if it would improve the game if it was realistic i'm just yeah it is just a difference lap times as well on acc they're always faster pretty much on every sim to be honest they're always faster i think it's just because you can exploit different things the tracks obviously are very realistic in acc but they are going to be slightly different in terms of lap time you can break the setups the cars might be slightly quicker in the game than they are in real life it's, there's, there's so many variables, you know, that there might be slightly more grip in the game than there, are, there is in real life. It's always going to be different, but it, it always seems to be in the Sims' favour. And ACC is no different. So wet weather, again, is a huge difference because I don't think rain physics are quite there yet in Sim racing. I think ACC, to be fair, probably has the best wet physics, but it's still a long way off. I think the main things really are there's too much grip on the racing line, the traditional uh, dry racing line in the wet. So you can use it, 
which makes it quicker than the sort of conventional wet lime, which is not strictly correct. I guess in some corners at certain tracks, that is the case, but a lot of the corners of, I think, Snetterton Turn 2, you go all the way, you go really deep, break really late, go really deep, take a wide line and get a good exit. Whereas in the sim, you just sort of break a bit earlier than you would in the dry, take a dry line and the grip's sort of there to help you out. And if you look at the, the wet lap times in the sim compared to real life, it's so much quicker. So, I mean, that says it all really. You can go TC1 in the wet. You just wouldn't be able to do that in real life. You can't really even do that in the dry, let alone the wet. And yeah, it, it, there's too much grip on the dry line. It doesn't feel random enough with the grip. It feels like you've got just too much linear grip the whole way around. Going into a braking zone in real life in the wet, you're in the ABS, you're out of it, you're in it again. It's like wobbling around. You just don't get that feeling in the game. And I, I think it'd be good. I think that would be one good thing if they could work on that. It would be beneficial because you get, as a, as a, I suppose, a gamer, you would get more of a a sense of what it's like to drive a car in the wet in real life and it's yeah it is pretty wild to be honest so yeah the final then the final difference is repairing damage in real life to the game it's a lot different and you know in the game if you make a bit of contact or even if you write the car off the car will be fixed in the pit stop within two or three minutes which it sounds like a lot but you know for a 24-hour race for example it's not that much in real life if you clip someone slightly too hard into a braking zone and burst the radiator game over like that's race over. That's pretty much what happened to us at Spa. It's so different. The approach is so different. You have to really drill it into your head. Coming from the sim to real life, you have to drive so carefully. And it's, it's hard because, you know, the ego sometimes takes over. You're in a wheel to wheel battle with someone. You really want the position. And if you go that little bit too far, you might, yeah, as I say, burst a radiator pipe or just get a little bit of damage somewhere. Even if you like break a bit of the bodywork and the aero's suffering from that. And you have to do the whole race with that damage or you might even retire the car from it. You're letting teammates down, you're letting the massive group of people down in the team. You have to drive almost like a wuss, almost like you have to have a very different approach. And it's very hard because as I say, you need to assert yourself in, in real racing. You have to be aggressive and you have to defend your position on track and you have to go for moves to look impressive. But at the same time, it's, it's very risky, very, very risky. But those are the differences and there as i say a lot more differences than similarities i'm not burning kunos for making a bad game i love their game i think it's a great game but there's there is a few differences it'd be interesting to see if they get fixed over time or if there's a new sim that comes out that maybe improves on these things that are different either you know gt simulator coming out soon called ren sport that'd be interesting to see how that is but yeah i think for the video that is pretty much it and as i say the reason i made this video is because in twitch and when i'm streaming and stuff i always get questioned what are the differences and it's a very very fair question because I've never really made a video on it. So this is long overdue and I hope you enjoyed it. Do give it a thumbs up, sub to the channel if you did enjoy it and let me know, have I missed anything? I'm sure I have. Are there any differences or similarities that you think are very important that I've missed out on? Because I'd be very intrigued to see what you think those are. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Take care and uh, yeah, see you later. Bye-bye.